All right, hello. So my name is uh, Martin Leblanc. I am the CEO and founder of a company called IconFinder. IconFinder is a search engine at the moment that is uh, yeah, hosted on IconFinder.com. It looks a little bit like Google, where you have like a home page with a big search field, and then you can search for, for example, user, and then you get uh, visual search results that you can download. And then if you are a designer or developer, you will use that icon you find uh, and put it inside whatever application you are, you're using. Uh, so it's a really simple, uh, like pr uh, basic product. Um, so right now, yeah, the customers, they use them for web and desktop applications, mobile applications, and also we have a segment that we call like the PowerPoint segments, which are people who are working in the marketing department. They're not really designers, but they like to have like a good looking PowerPoint, for example. And we have approximately one third in each of these uh, categories. Um, the basic business model is that we have uh, contributors who come with all the, the icons. So they are none of the icons are owned by IconFinder. They can upload them to us uh, on our site, and then we will make sure that they are being found by all the users. Uh, some of them, we'll get back to that, some of them buy icons and we will uh, take 30% of the revenue and give 70% uh, to the contributors. So it's kind of like this ecosystem um, and marketplace where we are the middleman more than uh, owner of the content. What I'll be talking about today is uh, we've been, when we uh, initially uh, started the company, it was all free content and we grew to uh, millions of users per month and we had this website with free icons and basic no revenue, a little bit of uh, advertisement. Um, but we didn't have any like <coughs> monetization. Um, so we went out and talked to some investors, some Danish investors, Vixfonten uh, and some American ones, uh, 500 startups. Uh, and we pitched them an idea that we would like to build uh, monetization. It should be a little bit like AdWords where you have the free content that will drive all the traffic and then we will have some premium content that sits uh, beside the free content and then hopefully some of the users will choose that over the free content because it's, uh, it's better. So that was kind of like our idea and we got funding. Um, but we have been, that was back in 2012 and since then we have been going through different stages of monetization. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about today because um, I'm pretty sure that if you are building a new company, you're considering subscriptions or are you uh, considering like transaction-based uh, monetization. So we've been trying actually different kinds. So I'll, I'll talk about uh, the thoughts about it and, uh, and hopefully you can learn a little bit. So 2012, we only had free icons and 13, the first thing we did was basically to, to open up for this premium icons where we could sell the icons. Uh, and it looked like this where on the site, uh, you could see the premium icons, you could click the buy button and then it would pop up and ask the user to deposit some money and put it inside like a little wallet. And then if you select the $10, put in the credit card number, click deposit, it would save the credit card and add a little $10 at, at the top uh, next to your user account. Uh, and then you could start buying icons. So that model was uh, worked it worked okay. It was not like a huge success. You could see you could just buy them directly from search results. Um, we had this idea that our customer, they were a sink, like just a guy with a credit card. And that was kind of like, and he was a designer. That was kind of like our mental model about who our customer were. And this was our growth in revenue. So I don't know if you have tried uh, pitching investors, but you don't draw a graph that goes like <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> normally. So you can, you can imagine, we had a board meeting here, <laughs> and uh, you can imagine what, like, you know, what the topic was there. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> they weren't particularly happy. Um, so we decided here that you know, we, should, we needed to do something. Um, and the smart thing to do is start to like, talk to a customer. So what we did was that we s we just in a very like uh, approach we simply said that we everybody on the team needs to understand who our customers are, and so we made sure that everybody answered support cases. We s because we have this website that is on iconfinder.com, 
it's all in English, there's nothing Danish about it. So we couldn't just like book physical meetings and meet with them. Um, so we had to do it every, everything o over the internet. So we basically just picked random users that we could see if some of them were paying. So we just said, okay, this guy's paying, so we will prepare some questions and then we will set up a Skype meeting. Actually, if you ask users about their opinion, a lot of them will actually help you, especially if you say that, do you have 15 minutes to give us some feedback? Uh, you'll be surprised about how, how much help you can get from people because they like to also tell you what's wrong with your product and what, what you should build. Um, and like they like to feel involved also. Uh, so we had a lot of Skype meetings, just like 20 minutes, asking them where do you work, how many colleagues do you have, how do you use icons, all kind of stuff. And then we just wrote it down. And we, of, of course, also did surveys, uh, just simple Google Docs. It works perfectly for surveys. And what we found out was that our user, our customer is not a single person. It's actually uh, the guy who uses the icons, but he's on a team together with a developer. And actually, none of these guys, if you're working in an agency, you don't have a company credit card. So these guys, they don't have a credit card you know, to deposit $10 all the time. So every time this guy needed icons, he had to go to the project manager, borrow the credit card, go back to his table, buy it, in, insert $10 into his account, make sure it gets the receipt, and maybe give the receipt to somebody else, a bookkeeper. And, and for this guy to spend 20 minutes getting some icons, it's not worth it. So he would just go buy some, get some free ones or something else. Um, so just changing our like, model about who our customer are really like, changed how we monetized also. And we could see that, okay, depositing cash and continuously asking for a credit card is, is not a good idea when you have uh, this type of customer. Um, so of course we decided to let's try subscriptions. Um, what subscriptions solved for us is that um, you can you can basically just yeah enter a credit card once and then you can save it. Uh, we're using um, a service called uh, Stripe, which is really good. Uh, the thing with Stripe is that they take all the risk and make sure all the security is, w is working, and you don't have to store all the physical credit card data. So you can, if your site gets hacked, you won't like have a ton of credit card numbers getting stolen. So we could basically store everything uh, using Stripe. Um, another good thing about subscriptions is that this designer guy, he only gets one receipt per month if they choose the monthly plan. They can also choose an annual plan, and then they will only get one per, per year. Um, and this one is really important is that the, the price, if you are in a project and a project manager, he hears that you only need for like $29 per month and it will be this fixed price. It won't change. That's a huge uh, benefit for when you are talking to a, uh, <coughs> a guy who has to pitch it to his project manager. Um, so what we did was we we thought we knew our customers and we decided to have these. It's not the best photo, but it was the best one I could find. There are four, four plans and they are divided into, uh, I think it was $29 for this one and there's a single user and then we have two to three users, 69 and four to six, 129 and then seven to 10, I think for one, 199. So this, we had these four plans and we really thought that was brilliant and this was, uh, like a chart we made and presented to the board and told them how brilliant the pricing structure was. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. <laughs> but uh, the only thing that happened was that it uh, increased the revenue a little and then it was flat again. <laughs> so this was the next very awkward board meeting. <laughs> 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 um, and I think the point is that <laughs> don't make product decisions uh, by looking at a spreadsheet because what you do is that you, you, you uh, underestimate how complicated the product will end looking. If, we, if you just draw a graph and say that we need a, this is a pricing point, this is a, you'll end up with a, a user interface that is overly complex. Um, so what we did was that we, okay, said like, okay, we need to like blank slate. We need to make it as simple as possible. We just said that, okay, we need two plans. One is a $9 plan, which is kind of like, a nine, $9 is like so little that some designers will actually choose to buy it from their personal credit card. They don't even bother to go to <laughs> the product manager. Um, and then we had like a, 
now it says 19, it's actually ended up being 29. And this one is called the unlimited plan. So it had like, you could download unlimited amount of icons at $29. And we thought like, you know, we loved Spotify. We thought that this idea about uh, consuming a product without con considering the cost all the time made a big difference in terms of like value of it. So when you have an unlimited plan where you can just download icons, you never thought about like, is it worth it? One more download. You can just, if you needed uh, a thousand downloads uh, icons for a prototype, you would just download that and not think about it. And we could see that the average number of uh, downloads were not a lot. Even though people were given unlimited access to icons, they were not like misusing it. We only have like 2% of the users who are misusing it. So, and it's very easy to, to stop. So our approach now was like, from the user's perspective, this was actually the only um, sketch we made. And I found it in a, a sketchbook. <laughs> so this is the original one. <laughs> but it ended up looking like this. You can't see the, the boxes that much. Um, but it's basically just like, we have now we, our sign up page is just all white, two plans, two prices. One is called unlimited. And, and it's just a much better way to present it. And basically, I mean, the whole product is the same. This is the only change is the number of plans. The pricing is almost also the same. It's like not a lot of difference. Actually, you can see here it says if you want to add additional users, it costs you $19. So we just, <laughs> the, com the complexity of that will only be visible to users when they have already signed up. And then the complexity of adding new users will be happening at a later stage and not when they are signing up for the initial uh, plan. Um, so that changed the, the revenue a lot. <laughs> you can see we launched it here and then immediately it, it, it changed kind of like the slope of the revenue. Um, and obviously, yeah, board meetings are still awkward and they want, <laughs> want, <laughs> they want more, more growth all the time. But it, it basically I think it's like uh, continuously like simplifying our offer really uh, helped us uh, uh, kind of like f fine tune the subscription model. And even though it's not like huge changes, small changes actually can make a dif big difference in the long run because it can change the slope of the, of the revenue. Um, and if some of you are considering um, changing to like a subscription model, one of the things that we talked about um, was that we needed to, when we started adding the, all these premium icons, we thought there was, there was at some point, there must be like a point where you have enough content, you create enough value for the users to actually justify um, a subscription model. Because, I mean, you could start a subscription model here, but then it will be only be like $2 per month because you only have a very little content. So you can like need to like be honest with yourself, look at your co what is the value you're creating, and then set the price based on that. Um, so maybe for us, it, it was even a good idea to have this wallet-based system in the beginning, because starting out by just launching a subscription model might not have worked. Um, and one interesting thing is that um, our contributors, as soon as we started ha getting growth in, in the revenue, uh, these designers, they started earning all these 70% cuts all the time, and they could see that they were earning more and more money. So it started this positive feedback loop. So now we're in like a, a positive feedback loop where we're getting more and more icons in per month. Um, so that's a positive side effect of it. And I think this is a, an old quote I have. Uh, a user interface is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not that good. And I think it's like, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty good idea to always like look at your interface and say like, is it, if you are like presenting it to a guy next to you that doesn't know your website, if you have to sit and explain it for him to understand like your pricing model, <laughs> you have to redo it. It has to be self-explanatory, so that's it. <laughs>